ladies and gentlemen, the captain with an update on our progress. EasyJet is now Britain's biggest airline. Hold on to your hats. Carrying 90 million passengers last year. Nice face. Bumpy face. But in 2019... This is going to be challenging, I think. Times have never been tougher for airlines. Fly BMI blames rising fuel costs for its collapse. Staying top dog in these turbulent times... You know, better wet pants than a broken neck. ..means flying more passengers... Please don't get drunk on board an aircraft again. ..on more flights... There's various things we can't predict. Retard, retard. I just broke the wiper. ..to new destinations. Wow. Look at that. Doesn't get much better than this. And that means hiring a new crop of young pilots. We'll just wait for these two ducks. OK, that's clear. We're clear for takeoff. Who could be flying you to 30,000 feet... Minimum. ..sooner than you think. Retard. ..over a crucial six months. Relax, 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 relax. Our cameras have been given unique access inside the cockpit. Are you from around here? Bakewell. Where the tarps, where the tarps come from. from. Do they actually... Are you talking to one? <laughs> ..following all the highs... God, I can hear everything clapping. ..and lows. I need first aid. So buckle up, fold your trays away... <laughs> ..retard. ..and prepare for what could be a bumpy ride. That was not my finest. From Inverness to Southampton, Belfast to Bournemouth, EasyJet flies to 17 destinations across the UK. Short domestic hops are big business for the company. And with such a tight running network, they can't afford any hitches. In Newcastle, 186 passengers are boarding the flight to Belfast. They're all looking quite well behaved at the moment. Hello there. And this orderly commuter crowd are in for a treat. Newcastle's top pilot, base captain Steve Freeman, is at the helm. Flying with First Officer 22 year old Ajit Sidhu. And most importantly, please, throughout that is to monitor what I'm doing. Yeah. Because I'm getting old now, as you know, and you need to watch me, OK? I'm in charge of the, the other pilots. Most of them are young enough to be my daughter or son. Yes. <laughs> um, they don't have the wrinkles that I have. This afternoon, this unlikely duo have their work cut out. Four domestic flights carrying over 600 passengers. First, to Belfast and back, and then a return flight to Bristol. And, as if that wasn't challenging enough... Here comes Storm Freya. The wind's really picking up. With the tail end of Storm Freya still battering the UK, gusty crosswinds are forecast. And flying in crosswinds is no easy task. It increases the risk of a wing striking the runway or an aborted landing. Experience does come into it. I'll be honest with you, um, I actually enjoy the challenge because it, it focuses both of us more because you, you realise that there's a, a, perhaps a little bit more of a risk than on a normal day, but, hey, when I look at the weather like that, I go, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> Try and talk to him downstairs. Captain Steve calls ground support to push back the plane. Cut me ground. Good afternoon. Cut the ground. Hello. It's taking them longer than usual. Cut the ground. Hello. The ground. Hello. It seems they have a slightly more relaxed approach to getting flights in the air in the north. Hello, ground. <laughs> Patience is a virtue, Steve. <laughs> Maybe one last try. Hello, ground. Oh, hello, ground. Can we have your checks now, please? There you go. Finally, time for takeoff. Come take off from my 25 East and 3 off extra. 
But no sooner are they on the move than fierce crosswinds begin to batter the aircraft. You drive across a bridge where you've got gusty wind, and you know you feel the you feel the van or the truck buffeting. We want okay. You're at high speed going down a runway. For us, it's not about fingers crossed, hope this goes well. This is on us to make the right decisions. High above the clouds, the crew briefly escape the powerful winds below. It's nice and choppy on the water down there. I wouldn't want to be in one of those boats, would you? I think it'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> In the cabin, the regular commuters are expecting the usual swift service to Belfast. It's a short trip, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, so it's, um, it's like a taxi. But back in the cockpit... Weather warnings. The news from the ground isn't good. The hefty crosswinds are blowing at over 34 miles an hour. Whilst within the safe limits to attempt a landing, any faster, and they may need to divert to another airport. If we do go round, do we go to Dublin? Dublin is good, we've got fuel and the flight plan. But with Dublin over a hundred miles away, these passengers could be looking at a lengthy bus ride. And the next batch of customers currently waiting at Belfast might be going nowhere fast. Two thousand miles away in Cyprus. Everything's looking good so far. Iris Dakan is making sure her sixty million pound jet is safe to fly. These are always quite important checks because you see if the aircraft, you know, is still the same as when you left. <laughs> With eleven years as a first officer under her belt, she has her sights set on becoming an EasyJet captain. The thought of becoming a captain is something that's really scary, actually. It's hard work, you know, to get this job with EasyJet. There's a very big selection process. You have to know what you do, you have to be good. And luckily for Iris, today she's flying with 29-year-old Daniel Munoz, who passed his captain's exam just eight months ago. Hi. Is it all still there outside? Nothing's yes. falling off? Oh, it's raining! But first things first, what's for dinner? What do we got? Oh, what's, gonna have to give what's the chef's recommendations? I always play it safe, I got chicken. Chicken. Now, how is that safe? It's the most dangerous of all of them. But it's already pre-cooked, it's not like you've got raw chicken. For passenger safety, the captain and first officer must eat different meals. So that in the unlikely event of food poisoning, someone can still land the plane. Have you ever seen airplane? Why? <laughs> Never eat the fish. <laughs> OK. With a five-hour flight to Gatwick, Iris has time to grill Captain Daniel about captaincy training, also known as the command course. So if you could tell me one thing to take with me for the command course, what would it be? Communication is always the biggest one, actually. You're juggling so many things. I think communication is one of the first things that go when your workload is really, really high. If Iris makes the grade, she will join the ranks of 2,100 captains at EasyJet, 76 of whom are female. Oh, good for her. I like to see girls get on the same as men. Do you think you could have been a good pilot? I'm not very good at driving. <laughs> I can't pass my driving test, so they wouldn't let me fly a plane. <laughs> and flying this plane is about to get a whole lot more complicated. Wow. Did you see that? I wasn't looking at it, but I can still see it. The plane is heading directly towards a huge thunderstorm over the Greek islands. That was massive, like straight ahead of us. What is that then? The weather that we're as pilots are most afraid of are the clouds that are called cumulonimbus. So they're basically the big thunderstorm uh, clouds that can get up very, very high. These clouds can contain ice, violent winds, and cause extreme turbulence. 
You basically are taught from a very early age uh, when you're a pilot to steer well clear of them uh, because they're a danger to aviation. So I think it may be come further to the right. It's like a serious fall line. That's quite a strong thrust. Time for a sharp diversion from their planned route, a mere 100 mile detour across central Turkey. So heading 340 or something. 335 to one. Try 335. The smooth ride in the cabin, however, means everyone is wonderfully oblivious of the storm ahead. Where do you think the pilots are up to right now? They're probably just autopilot chilling. Isn't it? Something like that, isn't it? I reckon that in the cockpit they're playing eyes by. I guess what stars what in the sky. Wow, it is like really impressive though. Look at it. It's a big one, it's quite high. It's massive. And with seatbelt signs on in case of turbulence, Hello. some of the passengers are getting restless. Is there no chance of uh, this is, should be the last little bit of the weather here. We're going to pass it. That's because we're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> 100 we need miles to go off track. There, okay. And we are like literally above another country. So, right. In five minutes, that should yeah. be the worst of it gone, then we should be back on track and then we can up again. Yeah, it's the people. Oh, I get it, I get it, but this, this stuff yeah, is some pretty yeah. powerful stuff around here. I understand. Here. Thank you very much. See you in a bit. You see, now that is, the, is a difficult thing about being captain because Patrick can't always say back what you think. He, he's put his concern with us, but we've got bigger concerns. Yeah, exactly. You know, better wet pants than a broken neck. It's my motto. It's a new day in Manchester. Yeah, look okay. Yeah. Nice and shiny. <laughs> Proud Mancunian Captain Philip Ash and First Officer Tom Parker are preparing for a packed flight to Palmer. Well, obviously, as a Mancunian, Manchester is the best base on the entire network. Great crew, professional crew. We have a fun day out and we get paid for it. Manchester is the fastest growing of EasyJet's 11 UK bases flying nearly 4 million passengers to 63 destinations every year. And Captain Phil is one of its most senior pilots. I've flown Phil quite a few times and he is quite cheeky. Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome on board. You're in for a treat today. My uh, fourth favourite cabin crew team, led by Rebecca. Just testing, see if they're listening. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, cos he's our fourth favourite pilot. Yeah. Uh, it seems pretty smooth. Should we go seatbelt signs off? Let them roam free. Yeah, for Christmas, my wife genuinely bought me matte finish moisturiser for my head. Can you believe it? That's cheeky, that is. So I don't have a shiny head. But just 10 minutes into the flight, a shiny head might be the least of Captain Phil's worries. A passenger travelling alone has lost consciousness. Critical situations like this, the cabin crew must alert the cockpit straight away, giving them time to prepare for a medical diversion if needed. Yeah, go ahead. I think ideally, if we end up having to do an MRU diversion with a sick passenger, it's probably better for them if we can try and drop them off in the UK before we hit mainland oh, yeah, Europe. Sure. But for now, it's a waiting game while cabin manager Rebecca monitors the woman's condition. 
I guess we've just got to sit tight and wait to see what they say. Any deterioration and Captain Phil and his 186 passengers could be making a very swift return to the UK. Heading flight level 180 blue. 36,000 feet above the channel en route to Palma. Flying flight level 190 Z35 from back hotel. Captain Philip Ash and First Officer Tom Parker have just been informed they have a sick passenger on board. So she's on two Charlie. Two Charlie. Female passenger. She's feeling faint. Um, she's thrown up and she has, is conscious. The cause of the passenger's condition remains uncertain. A diversion is still on the cards. Stansted's safe option. Gatwick's up our sleeve with an auto lamp, possibly. I'm going to keep an eye on her every five minutes. She doesn't look quite right to me. We take what the cabin crew say verbatim. They're on the front line with the sick passenger. They've got the best tools to analyse uh, what we need to do. In the cabin, new information is emerging. The passenger has been able to speak to cabin manager Rebecca, and a nurse who happens to be on board has assessed her. I'm not sure whether she's had a, a slight choking effect or whether she's just had what's called a vasovagal, which is a fainting effect. I don't think she's quite 100% and I think she needs to be checked out when we land. Cabin manager Rebecca reports back to the cockpit. So she's OK. She's fine at the moment. Not worried, yeah. Just don't let her eat a sandwich while she's falling asleep. Exactly. With Sandwich Gate behind them, next stop, Palmer. Every day is definitely different. There's always something. Technical problems, weather issues, passenger issues. So you need to stay calm under pressure. 50, 40, 30. Ahead of schedule, Captain Phil brings flight EZY1911 to a gentle touchdown in Parma. They'll be happy anyway, won't they? 15 minutes early and 17 degrees. Exactly. If only we could get off. Have a red wine and some olives. <laughs> <laughs> and with a husband waiting for her in the terminal, the sick passenger seems to be on the mend. Back to normal. That was an interesting one, wasn't it? But Captain Phil has one big question. What sandwich was it? <laughs> was it? I can't believe it. Yeah. Can't believe it. Thank you so much. Oh, well, I hope you feel better. Oh, go and try that sunshine. Yeah, enjoy. Adios. Adios. Shall we go to the cabin? Certainly. Two and a half thousand miles away, 35,000 feet above a very blustery Belfast, veteran captain Steve Freeman and first officer Ajit Sidhu are getting ready to make their approach. It's below safety altitude. In this sector, it's 3,000. 34 mile an hour crosswinds await them below. The safe limit for a captain to land is just over 43 miles an hour, which means Steve can still choose to go ahead as long as the winds don't get any worse. If we can't get into Belfast, even though everybody would like to get to Belfast, and so would we, if we can't get in, we can't get in. OK, so still 35 up here. Uh, visual with the field now. Landing in crosswinds at Belfast will require a technique called crabbing flying sideways towards the runway, the nose of the plane pointed into the wind, and then straightening up just before touchdown. The final 100 feet of the descent requiring all of the pilot's skill to hold the Airbus steady as it's buffeted by gusts of wind. When you get 30 knots and it's gusting, 
that can cause the upset. And it's more challenging. The higher the crosswind, you know, undoubtedly it's more challenging. Yeah, down. Less than two minutes before landing, <laughs> Captain Steve takes manual control, then uses the side stick in his left hand to maneuver the plane's nose into the wind. When you're actually coming down in a crosswind, it's all very dynamic. And really, you're just, just constantly battling with the side stick more than anything on the actual approach with, with the upset and the gusts of wind. 500. At any given point during that approach, everybody needs to be happy with what is happening. 30 seconds from touchdown, and in the strong winds, Steve has moments to draw on his expertise to stabilize the plane's movement. 100 above. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard, retard. Captain Steve retard. commits to landing. First green. On down three to go. You made it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was feeling in here. <laughs> Everybody likes a good landing, you know. Uh, it's uh, everybody's got a little bit of touch of pride every now and then, even though they may say they don't. Welcome to Order Grove. Yeah, great landing. They know how to fly. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. Obviously. <laughs> I hope so. But while his passengers are relieved to be back on terra firma... Thank you, bye-bye. Bye now, TK. For Captain Steve and First Officer Ajit, this is only the beginning. It was OK. It was, it's not as bad as it will be back into Newcastle, so um, but that was a good one. 400 miles away from Belfast and three miles from Gatwick, First Officer Iris de Khan is continuing her quest to become an EasyJet captain. This year, EasyJet will promote over 150 First Officers to the rank of captain. You guys have jumped through lots of hoops to get here already, haven't you? A role that brings complete responsibility for plane and passengers and commands a six-figure salary. So we'll come through to the sim, man. But not everyone who applies makes the grade, and Iris has already been through a rigorous selection process. There we go. Which began almost 18 months ago. You have to perform. Every simulator session, every question they ask you, you know, you have to know what you're doing, you have to be on top of it. And I can fail. <laughs> Over the next six days, Iris will face the worst scenarios that can be thrown at a captain from manual landing in ultra-low visibility, smoke in the cockpit, and the ultimate nightmare, twin engine failure. There's gonna be a lot of things thrown at you, and I think in all of it, my biggest thing has been that I haven't been confident enough in myself. So now I feel like I am confident and I am ready. Iris's first task might seem simple, execute a smooth landing and takeoff, but this time she must do it from the captain's chair. It's a massive adjustment. The A320 is flown using a side stick. For first officers, this is operated by their right hand. Captains, however, sit on the left and so must switch to their left hand, often quite a challenge. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okie dokie, centre line. And guiding Iris during this tricky first day is training captain Chris Yates. I did say you didn't use your left hand for much. It's just familiarity, that's all it is. Acting as her first officer is fellow captaincy hopeful Giovanni Spina. How are you feeling? Busy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, oh, it's God, fine. I'm really trying very hard. If you hard. want, we stop. Uh, yeah, stop one sec. Easy five up for Mike. We are ready for the pass. We're running to seven. Time for the inaugural test of Iris's left-handed flying. Here up. Yep. Yeah. Up. So far, so good. Let's just get to three miles. Next up, an even more challenging test. Four. 
by landing the A320. Okay. Is that 2,000 feet, please? 2,000. VS uh, 1,000, please. Yes, 1,000. Approaching the runway too fast, Iris lifts the nose of the plane a fraction too high in an attempt to slow down. Oh, oops. All right, spoilers. You got a screen. And it's manual braking. Check manual braking. <laughs> Let's bring it to a nice halt there, Iris. There we are. Okay. No one's still alive. <laughs> Sorry about I the landing. I think we would live to tell the tale. Yeah. We would live to tell the tale. A bad start, and the end of the first week's training didn't bring better news. I did my final sim. I was so stressed. All went well until the end, and then I didn't pass. Which is really nervous. Um, and I, I think my confidence kind of slipped away. It's a bump in the road. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm gonna do it, I'm still gonna do it. I'm still here, I'm still in it. And yeah. It's just a shame. It's just a really massive shame. EasyJet train up about 600 new pilots every year. So yeah, take your time, get yourself into the correct seating position. This is very surreal. It's an intense 18-month course. It's just a bit lower. You're a natural pilot. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that looks good. Excellent. Once qualified, they can be posted to any one of 30 bases in Europe where they will live and work. And for newly qualified 26-year-old Josh Taylor, it's Paris. Just got to find my way to the crew room now. Unfortunately for Josh, he didn't study French at school. When I was told I was going to move to Paris, it wasn't something that I, I wanted uh, specifically. I was really nervous because I'm obviously Yorkshire born and bred. Today is his first day on the job. His first flight with passengers awaits. If he can get through the crew room door. There we go. Hey guys. How are we doing? Hi. Hello. Josh? Josh, yeah. yeah. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Josh Stefan, bonjour. As a newbie, Josh will be overseen by training captain Adam Elmstedt. How's life? Oh, not too bad, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, just settling in. Welcome to Paris. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, How's your French? Terrible. Good. <laughs> Awful. But Josh won't yet be judged on his linguistic skills. This morning's passengers will be more interested in his flying ability. Forward. Yep. Oxygen testing. OK. There you go. OK, shall I go? Yeah. Today's flight will be from Paris to Toulouse. Captain Adam will be taking off, but if the conditions are good in Toulouse, Josh will perform his first landing on the job. You want to impress, you want to show the training captain and the, the line captain you're with that you're able to perform at the level you're required to day in, day out. OK, I'm ready. I'll take it off. Nice and below the proper. Do you want uh, to try and take it from here already then, uh, Joshua? Uh, I can do, yeah. 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 All right. Do you have control? I have control, your radios. My radios. Whatever you're ready, you can disconnect and okay. get a feel of uh, the Airbus. Understood. Uh, disconnecting. Yep. During your first landing, there's a moment you take control and you disconnect the autopilot, and it's at that moment you're, you're flying the jet, you're looking down the runway, and you're thinking, right, I've got to get this right. The pressure's on for Josh to land safely with 150 passengers as witnesses. On the surface, you know, you are calm, level-headed, ready to, ready to do a job. 
Don't forget to look outside as well, uh, Josh, up to okay. get the visual picture. Understood. On the inside, the first line I was thinking, can I do this? But Josh has positioned the nose of the plane too low, which makes for a very bumpy landing for his passengers. Not quite the smooth start he was hoping for. Sorry about that, by the way, it was uh, pretty bad. <laughs> You can take off your shoulder harnesses oh, as well. Still railing after it. That's why it was uh, pretty, te pretty terrible, really. Yeah. It's the inexperience with it, I think. But it shouldn't happen again. It's very natural that, that you feel like this. And if you'd say that you're comfortable with it, I'll be worried. Josh has at least another 50 flights with the training captain, so he can improve his technique. How many hours have you got now? 1,500 now. 1,500? <laughs> First Officer Ajit and Captain Steve are heading back from Belfast to Newcastle. It's the second of their four flights today. They're just off the coast of northwest England, flying over an extremely breezy Irish sea. Oh, lovely. Just 30 knots across. And wind speeds have continued to increase. Bad news for the more apprehensive passengers. Very nervous. I threw on twice before I came on. I don't fly often. I haven't flown since the year 2000. With some of the strongest winds of the year, it might be more like flying queasy jet today. This is going to be challenging, I think. Yeah. And when one of the most experienced captains in the company says it's challenging, it might be time to worry. Yeah. Okay, let's prepare the cabin for that. Yeah. Every time you're in the right seat, it's going to be a learning day. <laughs> As they approach the runway, 40 mile an hour crosswinds batter the plane, rocking it from side to side. In turbulent conditions, it's not us that is, if you like, stirring the stick. Steve needs to keep the plane level for a safe landing. 500. Stable. Minimum. Back on firm ground. That was, that was for me, thank God for the rosary. <laughs> there is a palpable sense of relief amongst passengers. Just like that, everybody appreciates their life again. I was more nervous for the guys behind there. <laughs> we fell out of the skies, we don't. I'm just glad they were alive. <laughs> but while most passengers are glad the flight is over. So, guys, did you have a good flight? Yeah! Straightforward, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing at you? I'd like to remind Steve that he couldn't have done it if I wasn't there, so. <laughs> just part of the job. After a quick turnaround, Steve and Ajit have just one more return flight to Bristol before they can finally call it a day. Hello there. I bet you're not old enough to know the film Zulu, are you? Ever heard of it? Yeah. Michael Caine? I'm fair back to the future. 88 miles an hour, Marty. That's it, isn't it? Make sure there's a storm. <laughs> and where Steve and Ajit are going, they don't need roads.
early morning at Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. Do you want me to just have a quick gander at the load sheet? So, uh, why not? Newbie First Officer Josh is preparing to fly to Gatwick. Uh, I've got 58 zero fuel weight and the CFG is there. His first landing with passengers was a bit bumpy. Today, he's hoping for a smoother touchdown. And there's a special passenger he's really hoping to impress. Three, I can just make out two people in there. Dad, Ian, stopped up all the money for his son's training, £120,000. Uh, so, uh, FB validation? Yes, sir. Uh, flight one? And today, he'll find out if it was money well spent. First time will be the one that he, he always, always recalls, so it's got to be good. So, fingers crossed. Hello. All right, Dad. Welcome to the... Uh... Welcome to the big world. Yeah, that's it, you know. I'm sure he'll be uh, waiting to judge the landing with what he deems as an expert opinion on the subject. <laughs> yeah. As we say, it's a short flight. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Well, <laughs> that's a safe flight, then. Cheers, bonjour et bienvenue bord ce vol ici de destination de Londres Gatwick. Je m'appelle Franck. Merci votre commandant. Avec moi dans le cockpit, first officer Joshua Taylor. And to add to the pressure, Josh is going to attempt his announcement to the cabin in French under the watchful eye of French-speaking captain Frank Nortze. So I've written it down. I'm not. I'm not that stupid. I've got it written down. Like... Yeah. <laughs> I tried to memorize it yesterday, and I was just like, if I try and do this live, it's going to come out like a piece of piece of crap. Yeah. When I speak French, people just go, what? And I'm like, it's that bad. Like, I'm, I'm that bad at the French that people don't even know what I'm saying. OK, on the wrong. Yeah. Take off. Peter can't actually sit in there with him, but there you go. Thirty thousand feet up in the air, it's time for Josh to address his passengers in French. Now I dread to think how French sounds when spoken with a Yorkshire accent. I imagine it's truly, truly awful. Right, you ready? There you go. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Je m'appelle Josh. Je suis votre copilote sur ce vol. Nous volons à 800 km heure en altitude. Nous arrivons à 7h20. Uh, the temperature is zero degrees. Bon voyage. Tres bien, Josh. OK. Easy. Even if it's terrible, Dad won't know any better either, so... <laughs> it works. <laughs> I'm quite impressed, actually. Yeah. Quite impressed. It seemed OK. Ever been in the back, probably going, I have no idea what you just said. Did you understand what you said? Not all of it. <laughs> With the announcement safely navigated, it's just that perfect landing to aim for. Four passengers down over there instead, did Nice clear day though. You can see Paris just out to the side. Newbie First Officer Josh is on a return flight from Paris to Gatwick. His first landing with paying passengers came down with a bump. Anything for you? I'm fine, thank you. That's really awesome. So with his financial backer, a.k.a. Dad, on board today, the pressure's on to nail this one. My son's a co-pilot today. This is the first time I will have flown in an airbus with him. While Josh focuses... Hopefully we'll get there in one piece. <laughs> it's quite important, I suppose. Dad Ian is making firm friends with his fellow passenger in seat 2E. We will be marking him out to 10 on his landing. No pressure, then. Uh, I'm always nervous about my dad's opinion. I, uh, I want it to go well. Let's get start. 5,000 feet, sir. It's got to be good. 100 above. Minimum. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard. Retard. It 
so we thought that was really nice point there. Now, I'm not fluent in Yorkshire, but I'm guessing Josh is pleased with that. Nice landing. <laughs> nice landing. I'll give you a ten for that one. Or if you want to take a picture while you're in here, if it's between yeah. you. About the only time I'll ever get to sit in one of these. Sit in that seat before I do, eh? <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I, it was just fantastic. It, the, the fact that he was flying it, I'm really proud. Um, but this is the pinnacle, really. To be a qualified pilot means the world to me. Doing the thing I dreamt of since I was a kid. To do something you want to do every day is, is fantastic. At Gatwick, First Officer Iris de Khan has an important day ahead. After a setback in her captain training... It's been a crazy couple of weeks with the command course and everything. ..things are looking up. And I passed my final sim two days ago. It's one thing to pass the test in the flight simulator, but now she has to do it in 66 tonnes of aircraft and with 153 passengers. We will shortly be closing the doors. On this flight, from Gatwick to Geneva. So, as we didn't see the crew, how much of this pink bit do I rip out? Um, all pink. Correct. You're good. But luckily for the passengers, it's all under the watchful eye of training captain Tony Nixon, who's been a pilot for over 20 years and is not at all nervous. I'll calmly pull this out. Are you ready for EFB validation? Um, aircraft is fine, threats, um, training, first time in the left-hand seat, and our wind shear on departure. Are you sitting comfortably? Yeah. In training, Iris struggled to adapt when moving to the captain's seat and operating the side stick with her left hand. This morning, taking off for Geneva, it's her first chance to prove she's mastered what is essentially driving on the other side of the road. Sorry? Am I too left? Much left? A little bit. Okay. Three, three. Let's take off. Two, six, left. I'm trying to not think of how many people I have in the back. Mentoga, SRS, runway. When you start focusing on all the lives you have in your hands, then it becomes something way more stressful. Now she's airborne, the most important bit for a new captain. Oh, can you take a picture of me? Because then I can send it to my mom. She would love that. Are you ready? Ready. Uh huh. Have a look. If you need any more, oh, there is a fee. Those are all free. From now on, it's five pounds. With one of the most challenging parts of flying now looming, her passengers have mixed feelings about Iris's first attempt at landing as a captain. Uh, today is the very first time captaining the plane. She's not flying this one, is she? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm assuming, given that she's been given the nod to be the captain, that she's fairly competent. So, and I, there's, there's an argument to say that if it's her first time, she'll be trying extra hard to be safe. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put on a brave face. Internally, I'm slightly nervous. Iris descends into a very rainy Geneva. Gear down. With training captain Tony watching her every move, any mistakes now could be another setback in her quest for four stripes. 500. Stable. 100 above. Check. Minimum. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Retard. It's been a bumpy ride for Iris. But a smooth and safe landing at Geneva is a huge boost. Ah. Puppy check is complete. Thank you. There you go. Well done. Yeah. Easy, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't say easy, but it's like, it's, it's, uh... It's not difficult, though, is it? It's just... We're here, we're here, we're here. Well done. <laughs>
Iris has at least another five flights with a training pilot before she'll become a fully-fledged captain. We're alive, it's good. <laughs> That's fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can do whatever you want, you know, it's never stopped me. Now I'm excited. <laughs> good. Now you've got the first one out of the way. Uh, yay! I have a lot of people believing in me, and I think I believe in me now as well, that I can do it. Soon I'll be Captain Priestjet, which is very exciting. And for more air travel behind the scenes, Heathrow, Britain's busiest airports, next Tuesday at 8.30 and Wednesday at 8. Coming up next on ITV2, a brand new celebrity juice is on the way with Steph London, Jamie Winston, Anita Rani and Jimmy Carr. <laughs>